Hello and welcome by ASA RTL. My name is Joachim Wiersma and today I am going to talk about the, uh, this uh, Flamingo painting that I did uh, recently with, uh, with the ink tents. And before I forget, I also made a tutorial about uh, five tips uh, how, uh, from me how I uh, like to uh, use the ink tents and some shortcuts in, uh, in using them. So if you uh, didn't already saw that, that will be a pop-up so you can check that out. But uh, for now, we're gonna talk about the whole project. I finally uh, managed to get some time to finish this tutorial because currently I'm working on two very, very big projects. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm painting two paintings on the, on the biggest canvas I ever painted on. So those will be up soon on my channel. And they will be painted in, uh, in uh, acrylic paint and uh, also the, uh, the backgrounds will be used. Uh, I use the um, airbrush for it. So, uh, but that uh, will uh, come up. For now, we're gonna sh uh, watch this one. And to be honest, I uh, did uh, redo this one. I was um, not even halfway through, but I uh, didn't use uh, the... Um, uh, proper tape to tape my drawing down so therefore I started to, to bubble and do strange things and personally I hate that look so therefore I thought I will uh, I need to start over again because um, I want a, a flat surface to work on a smooth surface I like and also in my finished project um, I noticed some artists the, uh, who doesn't matter that uh, that as much because I saw them the the paintings especially for a watercolor um, that the the uh, paper was uh, yeah rubbling uh, and, and bubbling and also uh, they framed it and you still can see it but personally I really hate that look so therefore I thought I need to start over I need to get some proper tape and I had this tape laying around this is also used for um, watercolors you have to wet this tape before it gets sticky so therefore um, um, yeah you need some water and then lay it around your paper the downside of this uh, tape is that you have to uh, need uh, a knife to cut it out later again. I didn't do that yet, I will do it, and uh, then I'm going to frame it. But um, So that was uh, a little bit a uh, story before I started uh, this excellent painting. Now I'm going to show you the whole process. So here's the tutorial. And for this one I'm working on the Arches hard pressed paper. Like I said, I uh, like to use uh, very smooth surfaces and the Arches, the hard pressed uh, watercolor paper is the, the smoothest one. And the Arches is uh, one that I uh, see uh, quite often uh, recommended by other artists. And I have to say it's a, it's a very nice paper and it uh, does straight up uh, quite easily. And of course, especially if you have it taped down uh, correctly, but it's, uh, it's nice to work on. And uh, I started uh, with uh, laying in the background. And therefore I used for my initial drawing a uh, frisket film and masking fluid and I will have links to uh, these products in my video description. But it really helped, I just could be very messy and as you can see I'm building up quite some layers and therefore I, uh, I was very happy that I uh, did use the uh, frisket and the uh, masking fluid. So I, um, I have a little bit of green on the beak there, but that doesn't matter because it was in, in a black portion. As you can see, I just painted over my ink tanks. and uh, But the rest is quite uh, nice and clean to work from. Here and there are uh, some uh, little green uh, areas around um, the uh, flamingos, feathers, the neck feathers. But that's okay, I can work with that. I could have done uh, a little bit better um, job in covering that up but i knew that it wasn't uh, that um that much uh, needed so i could use the green in the feathers as well so therefore i just uh, let it show up but on the other side of his neck you see those teeny tiny uh, of quite thin lines of feathers that are sticking out i wouldn't have those if i didn't have uh, used that masking fluid so therefore it's a very great project to cover up uh, areas the, uh, who are need to be clean to uh, to get your um, fine details in and while i was talking that i'm starting uh, with a beak i like to uh, work uh, my way around uh, for this uh, subject most of the times i'm starting with uh, with the mouth or the beak in this ca case of the animals and then uh, then the eyes and this one was very nice shaped so i followed the shape of his uh, head and neck and body and uh, yeah, did go uh, my way around it. And I'm slowly building up. Uh, when I use the brush, as in this case, I'm just using the ink tanks from the, from the blocks. 
and uh, you see me also switch in between uh, with uh, with the pencils this is just uh, sometimes um, just to get the right um, details in and sometimes I found a brush handier and sometimes a uh, pencil but I noticed that when I use the pencil those colors are do show up uh, brighter and stronger than I'm working from the blocks and uh, well it, it, I think it is uh, also because I can then uh, when I'm using the, the uh, brush I have um, I also um, yeah, decide how much water I use and the more water you use the less translucent the colors will be and that is very handy when uh, when you like to layer uh, as I uh, like to do so then in that those cases I use the uh, the blocks and uh, for those fine little lines I like to use the, the pencils and let them show up quite strongly so I can layer over it and that's how I slowly build up my projects uh, basically and generally with all my um, art supplies but they all have their own approaches and this one is uh, for the inktense it's yeah it's, it's once again slowly building up and make sure you cover it uh, all with water but I have to say with that green background I still got green on my my hands and if I uh, did re -wet it also the brush would have some green on it again so some people are claiming that those are not a rewettable the ink tints, but um, I think it's it's not always the case and depends on which colors you use. I think maybe it's the paper, maybe uh, because I used many layers for the background to get a nice uh, strong green. Maybe that's a factor. I, I'm not completely sure, but keep it in mind. Don't uh, think that they are not completely uh, rewettable, or at least something is happening there. So be in, uh, be aware of that. And like I uh, will talk about um, in my outro, those shadows are very important and I'm slowly building them up with different colors to make them as dark as possible. Make them lighter is easier than make them darker, for uh, at least for me. And especially when you don't use straight black or something, I have a dark uh, purple and blue for this uh, these sections, for the shadow parts. And uh, therefore I needed uh, a little, um, quite some layers. But if you are a little bit too dark, uh, you just mix in a another color and use some white or the straight white, and, and you'll be you will be able to uh, lighten up areas quite uh, quite intense. Not uh, bright white again, but uh, you can lighten them up uh, quite well, and that's what I like of this uh, this medium. Um, the details stay under those layers quite quite well and especially for uh, for these kinds of feathers so you can build up and layer up uh, quite easily and really really what's your reference the uh, the way the, the the feathers are laid on his body the which direction they are going and how long or how short they are are very important to uh, indicate the uh, the shape of the the neck and sometimes some muscles uh, bone structures and that kind of things are very important and those will um, will show up if you have your uh, direction of uh, feathers correctly and of course then you will uh, start uh, laying in the shadow parts and lighter portions but if your feathers are off and you can uh, you can darken up some areas but it will not look okay you need the, the right direction And what I also liked, and I did talk about that in uh, the tutorial before this one, uh, where I give uh, five random tips uh, about uh, the ink things, is uh, using those palettes where you can re-wet your uh, ink things. Uh, this project uh, cost me quite uh, quite some time because of the, all those little details, but um, that wasn't a big problem because I could uh, leave my palette aside and paint uh, in uh, an next uh, another area the next day or even uh, after. Uh, uh, after a few days, it didn't matter because those, that color was still on my palette and it was uh, very easy to uh, to re-wet this, that. And also I found a uh, technique on how to uh, quite easily lay, uh, lay in those feathers I'm currently working on. That is also included in uh, those uh, that tutorial about the five tips. Because you can see uh, that there are some feathers but they are quite uh, color-wise the same also shape wise but um yeah you need to to, to let them stand out so we can um, see that there are some feathers in there but not much because it's um, it's almost a blanket of feathers so you you don't 
don't see much that is standing out in that particular area. But I found a, a quite an uh, easy way to uh, get those in. And I, uh, like I said, I shared it in my uh, previous tutorial. And I mentioned that tutorial quite often in this one. That's because it's quite uh, quite important if you want to know more about the uh, the techniques that I used. Um, so therefore, I mentioned it a few times. And this one was uh, this portion I'm currently working on uh, was for me the hardest because there were also some feathers uh, in there. They were visible, uh, a little bit more visible than uh, the ones I'm working now on on his wings and on his uh, further down uh, his his body. Uh, I could say. Um, but not as visible uh, as the feathers uh, more uh, above in the neck and uh, to towards the uh, area of his head. So I had to go in, in between those uh, feathers. That was a little bit harder for me to, to get him, uh, because the colors aren't uh, that, um, that um, uh, more different than the rest. I was looking for the words. <laughs> and so therefore I had a little bit trouble to get those in. I had them showing up a little too much or a little too less, so I, I reworked them quite often. As you can see, I'm now glazing over them because that white ink tends to show up a little bit too much. But um, yeah, just keep on working. If is something not working, just try to rethink what is going wrong and just rework and rework and layer over it and uh, you will get there. In most cases, obviously. If you don't get there, if you don't have the feeling you don't get there where you want to be, just Try to uh, ask yourself the question, what is going wrong? Which approach did you try? What did go wrong? And what, um, yeah, basically, what do you think that did go wrong? And it sounds quite easily, and I'm repeating myself, <laughs> but um, it's very important because you need to um, start thinking about the things you are doing, about the techniques, and what will happen. Uh, on your paper and uh, the more experience you get in that the more uh, the easier it will get uh, for you for uh, particular areas that are, are quite hard to get in and once again it may sound easy but uh, yeah it, it will definitely help you and also that's that's why I really like those uh, forums on uh, Facebook for example art forums where you can ask questions you you should uh, if you didn't uh, if you cannot figure it out for the section that I uh, that I already mentioned you uh, may take a picture of your artwork and post your questions over there and uh, a lot of people will uh, will help you out and I think that's that's very nice and very uh, um, yeah important that's that's how we learn And I really, really love the colors on this one. Um, the picture is from Pixabay, and so you you should be able to find it there. I just I didn't search for flamingo, but I have searched for birds, um, so it, it did show up quite uh, quite uh, early on in uh, from, from the first page. So I think it's still there. But I really enjoyed, uh, I really love the colors and enjoyed making this one because I had a very big range of different colors so therefore I thought I can really really use my ink tens, use the different colors and uh, get them out there and just uh, feel and see how they work together and here and there I did um, over expose a little bit of the colors but I really really liked it and that's the nice thing of being the artist you can uh, decide what you want to do with those colors of course and uh, like yeah, like I said, that's a very nice thing. That's the thing I really enjoy the most of about being an artist and not copying the exactly uh, the reference exactly, but uh, make it your own. Just uh, use it as a guideline. And here is a picture of the finished project, and uh, this is the closest as it looks in uh, daylight. So with that uh, tutorial about the five tips that I posted a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, uh, I had one question. I uh, did forget your name. I'm sorry, but I thought it would be nice to ask uh, to answer that question uh, in this tutorial. Um, there was a question about how to get the colors bright again, how how to get that brightness uh, of the colors uh, back into your um, your painting. And I think I understand the question because. When you start using the ink tints and you use water with them, the um, the colors will not uh, be as, as strong as uh, they are when you look at the, uh, for example, on the um, the pencils or on the uh, the blocks. Th those colors are very vibrant, 
but um, well, to, um, I don't have a straight answer yet. Uh, I like the colors uh, now how they are because I use a lot of different colors. So there's a little tip there. Uh, try to use as many colors as you can, as you see fit. Uh, I go a little bit overboard with my colors these days because personally I like it. Um, also, what is very important, maybe even more important, is to use your very darks and start uh, making them darker and darker because uh, most of the times I need a little bit uh, of extra layers with the ink things to get those darks very dark. Um, and also the lights. The lights are very important. So the, the dark and the lighter portions will make your artwork stand out more. And that is uh, just in uh, basically in general. But uh, for the ink tents, it, uh, it costs for me a little bit more time to get that uh, done. But it's okay. But that will help uh, to let your, your artwork uh, uh, pop more. So there you have one uh, uh, tip or answer. The second one um, will be... Um, uh, there probably is a varnish. For uh, which you can use on the ink tins as well. Uh, I didn't have to uh, look into that yet, but I think it's nice. I just now want to know, so therefore I uh, I will do a little project and use some furnace, and maybe I can make some comparison here on my channel so you can see the different results. But um, I would go for a glossy varnish. Uh, I do that also. Uh, yeah, varnish. I sell uh, varnish. I <laughs> don't pronounce it all all, all the time uh, as I should, but the varnish for. Um, Paintings uh, for the uh, acrylic paints and the oil paints that I make, and also for my uh, uh, airbrush backgrounds, I, I uh, use the gloss version because those ones uh, help your colors to pop up um, more, to bring them back, to bring that vibrant back, I should say. The pop up um, is, is based on how you work with your lights and your darks, basically, and the, the different colors. But the vernish will uh, bring those colors back in, into your artwork. Uh, so, like I said, I didn't try this out on the ink things uh, myself yet. There will probably be some people who did this already, but I, I will try it uh, as well. So, um, if you uh, think I, uh, if you like that uh, that idea to to use a furnace, I strongly suggest uh, test it on a different piece of paper. Because if it doesn't work, you may have ruined your artwork, your finished artwork. So keep that in mind. Uh, it sounds very um, very predictable, don't test things on your artwork, but sometimes I think I, uh, I, I in the beginning I did that because I thought, well, it, it doesn't take uh, as much time, I have finished this one, let's try it, but in some some cases you will ruin your artwork, uh, and I did that, so uh, please be, be aware of that, just try it on a different piece of paper. Uh, if you have any tips, if you saw this and you, you think I, I know uh, a bit about how to bring back those colors again, Please feel free to uh, give your answers or your tips in the comment section below because I really would like to uh, read them and I think it's very helpful for, uh, for you guys who watch this tutorial to, to get in, uh, to know a little bit more and to get some tips uh, about the, uh, the product, about, uh, in this case, Intense. I'm breaking in in my own uh, tutorial because I almost forget to mention that uh, the influences of uh, daylight lamps are uh, quite heavily. That is why I always show a picture of the end results in my uh, in my tutorials. And most of the times I'm uh, explaining it uh, then as well that I'm showing the picture uh, because it obviously is nice to, to look at the end results. But also to get a more realistic uh, look at the colors. So maybe you work with a daylight lamp or with ink tents. Uh, that will also uh, flatten out your colors quite a bit. So therefore, uh, a little tip there, maybe you are not completely sure how the, uh, the colors are in, in daylight. Just take your work outside of near to, uh, near to a window so you can see how it uh, really looks. Because uh, uh, the influence of daylight lamps is very, very strong in my case. So that's it and done. Thank you for watching. I hope you uh, found this tutorial uh, useful. If you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't already, please subscribe to my channel. That would be uh, really awesome for me. I re would really like that. And if you subscribe, please hit that uh, bell button next to the, the subscribe button so you get a notification when I am um, upload a new tutorial. So for now, once again, thank you and I hope to see you at one of my next tutorials. Bye bye!